What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Student Built Startups podcast. I'm your host, Cameron Stone, entrepreneur and recent graduate from the University of Minnesota Duluth. I interview young entrepreneurs to share their stories and business strategies. Now, on today's episode, I'm going to be doing a short, quick update episode just to fill you guys in a little bit about what's new with the Student Built Startups podcast, Young Entrepreneurs Evolution, uh, some of the stuff that I've been doing on the side, as well as my uh, graduating from school, all this sorts of stuff, um, kind of just giving a recap of the last few months, I guess. Um, so we'll jump right into it. Um, first thing I want to start off with is sharing a little bit about simply the actual Student Built Startups podcast, um, what's been going on with that, and what I see going on in the future for the podcast. Um, so last update episode I did, I shared that I was going to be doing a bi-weekly uh, podcast rather than a weekly podcast, which um, I've been able to do pretty consistently. I've been feeling good about it. Um, I haven't had any issues um, up until recently, but that was unexpected and I'm still on track. Um, so no worries at all. Um, we just recently hit over 2,100 downloads uh, since the inception of the Student Built Startups podcast. I'm super happy to see that we have officially reached 2,000 downloads. And right now, one of our uh, most popular recent episodes was uh, two episodes ago with Eddie Cecilia. So shout out to Eddie. Uh, We've got a little bit over 70 downloads of that uh, episode. It was a pretty fun one. Now, as for the future of the Student Built Startups podcast, since I recently graduated from UMD, I'm no longer a student. Um... I'm actually going to continue doing the podcast. I'm going to interview other students, other young entrepreneurs, um, and continue the podcast because it's something that I I really enjoy. And hopefully, as I progress through my entrepreneurial journey, I can tr- kind of transition from almost learning from uh, student entrepreneurs and kind of transitioning into more of a uh, relaying information from one student to the, another student and um, connecting uh, these different, um, students that are interested in entrepreneurship and giving them a way to connect with each other and hopefully provide a platform where they can, uh, promote their business, share their ideas and get some exposure for what they're working on and hopefully some recognition. Um, so hopefully that's a long-term goal for the podcast is to have a, a platform that can share these entrepreneurial, uh, stories of students. So that kind of wraps up like what I want to share about the uh, Student Built Startups podcast. Now I want to share a little bit about Young Entrepreneurs Evolution. Um, our community is growing and we're continuing with bi-weekly meetings. Uh, we meet every other Sunday and usually there's 10 people that show up to our meetings and we hang out, chat for a bit, say hi, um, discuss kind of uh, community building uh, thoughts like what we want the community to be like what kind of activities we want to do in the future, those sorts of things, as well as like kind of side things that we're doing within our community. So we have some ideas that we want to start working on. Um, We want to build a certain application um, to kind of have intertwined with our community. Um, We want to utilize different platforms to interact with our community. And we also want to work on kind of our promotion and marketing activities for our community. So these are all things that we discuss in our meetings and we all utilize kind of our entrepreneurial skills as well as our skills that we're learning in school to uh, kind of grow the community and build the community up in a collaborative way. And it's a really great learning activity and uh, opportunity to kind of put some of the skills that we've learned into use. Um, To be honest, we've been kind of lacking with uh, the community type stuff. We've been still meeting and still discussing stuff. We haven't really, really dived in deep into uh, much additional uh, stuff regarding um, actually developing stuff because all of us have been doing finals uh, in school, graduation type stuff. uh, And I personally am moving out of my house soon. So I'm ready to like get strapped in and uh, go pedal to the metal and fuel the jet for uh, this community and get things rocking and rolling over the next uh, couple months, hopefully. So that kind of wraps up Young Entrepreneurs Evolution. What's going on there? Um, You can check it out at ye.community on most social media platforms. Um, I encourage you to go check it out. And if you want to pop by one of our meetings, just shoot us a DM. Um, 
Now, moving on to a little bit more like personal type stuff. Um, I recently graduated with a uh, major in marketing and sorry, double major in marketing and marketing analytics and a minor in management information systems. Um, graduation was not as I expected. So this is going to be kind of a fun story <laughs> that I'm going to tell for the rest of my life, probably. Uh, but so I went home like a week before graduation or a few days before graduation to visit family to bring a load of stuff back home. Um, since I was I already had some stuff packed up to move out. And I got there. And then like two days after I got there, my dad tested positive for COVID. And then like a day later, I tested positive for COVID. And instead of a five day trip back home, it turned out to be like a two and a half, uh, like a 15, 15 day trip back home. Um, and that's how I spent my graduation was uh, I was kind of sitting on the couch with my dad, virtual graduation and had COVID. So doesn't get much better than that. <laughs> uh, but anyways, it's done. And uh, it was it was good. I was happy I was able to spend uh, my graduation with some of my family. Um, although it would have been nice to have my original plans that I had for graduation. But I had COVID. I got over it. I was thrown way off track after having COVID. I was not expecting to get hit that hard for that long. And really get nothing done for two weeks. So I'm playing catch up with a lot of different things, um, trying to get back back on track. But I'm graduated now. I have my degree and I have some plans for the short term and I have some ideas for the long term. Um, and I want to share a little bit of those plans with you as well. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to share about like recent activities. Um, I guess I've been dabbling a little bit with the whole sports card thing. Um, I recently got a submission back from PSA um, with some graded cards. Uh, made a halfway decent profit, but uh, it's not really something I'm going to sell in the short term. Um, I plan on holding a lot of my sports cards uh, long term. Um, I made a few mistakes. Um, I guess one thing that I would share, like if you're going to get into sports cards or anything of that nature... Um, <clears throat> the mistake that I made that I would have done differently was instead of investing in a lot of cheaper cards, uh, save up your money and buy things you really believe in that are a little bit more expensive. Um, and I, I naturally tend to uh, think this is a better option now because now like I went and bought a bunch of cards. I was like buying things, getting things in the mail. I love getting things in the mail, open them up. Um, it was exciting, but then again, now I'm like stuck with like a hundred cards, 200 cards that are worth like five to 25 bucks. And now I have to go and like list them on eBay and sell each individual one. Whereas if I would have spent like a thousand bucks on one card, it might be worth five grand now. And I just have to list one thing for that entire, like four grand profit. So that was one learning thing that I'm, I made with a sports card thing, kind of looking uh, back towards a couple update episodes ago, maybe like a year almost um, last summer when I really got into sports cards heavily. All right. So moving out of sports cards, um, I also have been doing my flip game absolutely like on fire lately. Um, I have been flipping things left and right. I've been going to the thrift stores like every week grabbing like a good amount of stuff. I mean, the other day I was at uh, Savers and I bought a keyboard for 15 bucks. It's worth like $130. Um, and my biggest flip ever, I bought a uh, TV series uh, on DVD called To Steal a Thief. And it was a brand new sealed in the package. And it was at Savers for like 125 bucks or something, something like that. Maybe no, it was like $200. And I went and sold it for like $600 on eBay in a matter of like four days. That was like my single biggest flip I had ever done. It was a like $380 profit and it was, it made my day. I mean, for me, like I get paid like $10 an hour at my job currently, um, part-time job for college sort of thing, 10 bucks an hour. And for me, like a uh, $380 profit, that's like uh, 38 hours of work. And that was a good, uh, a good <laughs> profit for me. So I was happy about that. Um, and still like selling at least 
three to four things a week and making uh, a fair amount of money enough to pay for a majority of my bills. Um, and it's something that I really enjoy doing. I enjoy the process. I enjoy going out shopping for these things. I enjoy looking up on eBay, kind of the thrill of uh, thrifting. And then also the selling side, like how can I price my product to be more competitive than some of the other products on there? Um, I have a certain style to how I do my uh, listing on eBay. I prefer to try to be quick. I prefer to list um, things fast and spend a little, as little time as I can in the listing process um, and settle for a slightly lower price just um, and for the sake of moving inventory and saving time. So that's one thing that I've been doing is flipping things a lot. Uh, I have not slowed down on that uh, recently. Two more things to share about what's been going on, and then we're going to move into kind of some future plans that I want to share with you guys. Um, so one thing I wanted to share was the crypto world. That's one thing I've been getting uh, a little bit deeper into. I've been getting into the crypto um, area and learning as much as I can, getting some actual knowledge about it rather than just holding on to some Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, I'm pretty diversified with my portfolio, uh, but I heavily... Uh, I'm invested in Ethereum. I, I believe Ethereum has the most potential due to its um, utility aspect. It can be used to do a lot of different things rather than just being used as a currency. Um, Ethereum, I see it as being a potential platform for the next like version of the internet, like Web 3.0. Um, and I, I, I think it's very promising uh, in comparison to strictly... Bitcoin, I think long-term Ethereum might have uh, better prospects than uh, Bitcoin. Um, so I've been reading into the uh, cryptocurrencies, you know, dabbling into different ones and watching some educational videos, that kind of stuff, um, specifically because I've been getting involved in NFTs. Um, and I have went through the process of actually creating an NFT collection of my own, um, not really with the intention of making much money or for the intention of uh, trying to make something big. I really just wanted to learn what the process was like of creating an NFT collection and what went into that. Um, so I created a collection. I put some decent time into it. It was called, uh, or it is called Crypto Tickers. And I know there's a lot of like hype and culture and kind of uh, energy around the investment space, our own stocks with all this GameStop and uh, uh, meme stock type thing. So I figured I would combine uh, stock tickers and NFTs into one thing. So um, I took every stock ticker on the S&P 500. I typed it out on a page and I created a JPEG of that for all like 500 tickers and uploaded every single one as an NFT and put them up on OpenSea and uh, went through that process of actually doing it haven't sold anything, haven't really put much up for sale, to be honest. Um, I don't really expect to get much out of it, but I learned kind of the process. Um, so now someday if I want to actually develop a real strong NFT uh, project, um, I have a, at least a baseline knowledge to do that. In addition to creating my own NFT collection, I've also invested in my first NFT piece of artwork. And I wanted to experience the kind of NFT, um, you know, area from a purchaser or investor perspective. So I, I found a project uh, recently that I strongly believed in, um, and I made a purchase and I invested in it. Um, it was uh, Gary Vaynerchuk's V Friends um, NFT project, and. I purchased a well-connected werewolf as my NFT. It gives me access to the VCon conference for the next three years that will be occurring. And it's like a three-day conference with uh, geared towards entrepreneurship and uh, marketing. So hopefully that's something that I'm going to be going to. And I'm going to hopefully um, have a strong investment in this NFT. All right. So that is the majority of what has happened over the last a uh, few months since the last update episode. Um, and looking forward, so I'm graduated now, 
and instead of going out of college and getting a job straight away, um, I'm taking a slightly different path. I thought long and hard about this, and I was very tempted to get a job straight out of college because it's something that I could relatively easily fi- easily find. Right now, the job market's pretty good. Um, I have a pretty good degree. I had great grades, and I have a good resume with some good work experience, and um, could quite easily find a well-paying job that I would moderately enjoy. Um, but there's also that side of me that just, you know, it's craving a opportunity to put in a 110% effort into myself and what I have in mind that I want to pursue. So I've given myself at least this summer to put forth a 100% of my effort into a few different things. So these few different things that I'm going to pursue straight away, I don't know what's going to come of them. I don't know what's going to be most promising. I don't know what I'm going to enjoy the most, but I want to give myself the opportunity to explore. Um, And I'm lucky to be in the position to be able to do that. So the first thing that I'm going to really put forth a solid amount of effort in is young entrepreneurs evolution. I'm absolutely passionate about the idea of giving young entrepreneurs a place and a platform where they can come together and learn and uh, interact with other people that are just like them. That's something I want to put my energy into. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to be kind of branching off in a few different areas. So with Young Entrepreneurs Evolution, I'm going to be like community building, um, reaching out to Um, other successful entrepreneurs, people that can kind of bring value to the community, and then also working on developing an application of some sorts. Um, We have some stuff in mind, I just don't quite want to share it yet. Um, So we have that kind of bucket that I'm going to be putting energy into. The next thing that I'm going to be putting energy into, um, I want to make sure that I retain my analytical skill set and stay sharp with that. Um, So I'm going to be working on developing a uh, predictive algorithm for trading for trading stocks and maybe options trading. I've been doing a little bit of research. I've been collecting sources to do research and dig in deep into this area. Um, And I have a few different things in this kind of topic that I want to dive into. So I want to use Python as my coding platform. And I want to do a couple things. I want to basically create like a uh, filter to filter stocks in the S&P 500 that meet certain criteria. And it'll send me an email list of these stocks uh, that meet those criteria uh, as like just a starting point. That's one thing I want to do. And then from there, I want to develop a a couple different types of predictive algorithms. I want to develop a predictive algorithm for just stock prices to predict in the future. I want to create a predictive algorithm to predict uh, whether a stock will go up or down uh, over a certain period of time. And then I also want to create a predictive algorithm um, to predict a stock's price at a certain point in time. So those are the types of predictive algorithms that I want to create. And then I want to utilize those to create a AI trading bot in Python um, that can hopefully do one of two things, either an AI bot that will tell me exactly what trades to do. And I want to do binary options for this, but it'll basically send out an alert to me saying, do this, invest in this, and then sell at this point. And that's one option. The other option is to create a bot that will actually execute trades for me. Um, And that's one thing that I want to do. I want to learn um, a little bit of this computer programming uh, type stuff to kind of sharpen my skill set and the analytical side to maintain my skill set in those regards. Um, And that's one project that I'm really excited for because I'm I'm very interested in trading stocks on the stock market and that sort of stuff. Um, And I think it could be a good learning experience, first of all. And it could potentially be lucrative if I develop something that's actually useful. Um, There's a lot of opportunities, both personally and uh, potentially business opportunities that could come of uh, something of that nature. So then the number three thing that I'm going to be putting energy into is the Student Built Startups podcast. Um, I've really just been maintaining the podcast over the last uh, six to eight months. I've been putting out content. I've been doing what I need to do, kind of meeting my expectations of what I need to do and keeping 
people engaged uh, to some extent. But I want to start doing more for the podcast. I want to start um, putting out uh, more kind of like collaboration type things. I want to start asking for more reviews. I want to start putting out more content on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, um, those sorts of things. Um, and really just starting to push uh, push the podcast more to get more eyes on it. Um, and I think I can have a little bit of extra energy to divert to that. Um, maybe not as much as some of the other stuff, but I want to continue doing it. And I think it could be a, uh, at the very least, an addition to Young Entrepreneur's Evolution um, and maybe transition to something as a partnership with said business. Um, lastly is the flip game. I'm going to continue the flip game. I'm going to continue going to thrift stores, going to garage sales, buying, selling, um, that whole gig. Cause I mean, I can pay my bills with it. I, I mean, I put in maybe 10 hours a week at most, at most 10 hours a week, and I can pay my bills, uh, doing that. And that gives me a lot of time to, uh, put energy into other areas. Now, granted, I know this isn't the most financially sound decision that I made. It It's definitely not solely based on finances. It's more of a personal uh, decision to not get a full-time job right out of college. And I want to, I know if I don't pursue some of these things directly right now, I will, I'll regret it in the future and I may not have the opportunity to do so in the same way again. So that's kind of what I'm planning on doing after um, I move back out of Duluth and, and uh, get done with some of this other stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of my plans. All right. So I know this is a solo episode and sometimes these feel a little bit more lengthy um, without an additional guest to discuss with. Um, so I'm going to wrap it up here. That's really all I got to share at the moment. Um, Thanks for listening, everyone. And I am looking forward to my next interview. I haven't done it yet. I don't have it scheduled yet. Um, but I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And I will ensure that I continue to put out the best, uh, best content that I can regarding the podcast um, in the near future. So thanks again. And I will catch you guys on the next episode.